Very good. Our guest today was here last year, and I thought produced one of the uh, one of the more excellent chapels that we had. So uh, he is the worship pastor of North Shore Community Church, and a guy who I sit about ten feet in front of uh, every every Sunday morning uh, at about nine thirty. So please welcome uh, Mr. Brandon Schumann back to the big show. All right. Hi. How are you guys doing? That, that's lame. How are you guys doing? That's, I, was, I mean, there's like 200 of you in here. I need more than that. Hi. How are you today? Okay. I accept that. That's fine. That's all I'll ask you guys to do. So, cool. So, yeah, the last time I was here, I shared my story with you guys. And I have another story to share with you today. Um, and it's pretty crazy. So, a couple months ago... Uh, my wife and I were in a pretty serious accident, and I don't know if you guys can see a, a nice scar above my eye from where you're sitting, but um, we, this is actually a really funny story, and you're totally allowed to laugh at it, even though I could have died. So it's totally fine for you to even laugh at that. That part isn't funny. You need to laugh at the ne next part. Okay, so um, my wife and I were up in Anacortes visiting my dad, and we're cruising around on a little Vespa scooter, okay? It's yellow, so super manly scooter that I chose, and... Um, we're going super slow, we're wearing helmets, and we totally crash. And it all happened really quick, but I, like, when we were turning, I could tell we were going to crash. And uh, we're going 8, 10 miles an hour, maybe. They only go like 15 miles an hour anyway, just so you know. And um, I could just kind of, in the quick decision of it, I'm like, if I slam on the brakes, I'm going to spill us onto the road, and then we're both going to hit concrete, and that's not good. So instead, I will, I'm like, oh, look, someone's yard. So I kind of got the scooter up to the curb so that we would kind of fall into somebody's lawn, um, which worked out really well for my wife, and she totally wasn't hurt at all. And, um, but there was one very large uh, flower planter, like made out of uh, clay, full of dirt, so it was like 100 pounds, and it was just one of them, which is great. And apparently, I aimed at it with my face. So I kind of tucked and rolled, right, as you do when you fall off stuff. And let me, I mean, how many people have fallen off their bike going faster than 10 miles an hour, right? So four of you, that's great. The rest of you are lying. Um, so I was even thinking in my mind, I'm like, oh, we're going to crash, and I'm totally going to mess up my dad's scooter, and, and that's lame, but we'll be okay. But anyway, I kind of tuck, and by, by just the way I fell, the flower pot got under my helmet and split my head open, like super deep, like nicked an artery, and completely crushed and twisted and broke my nose. So this is what I look like after that happened. So like, right? Oh, so that was me attempting to smile. You like, you, should we keep this up like during lunch maybe? Would that, would that be okay? All right, so super bad, super bad. So, here, so here's the deal, I went, to, I went to the ER and somehow I wasn't knocked out when this happened. I just, a lot of blood and I knew that uh, I needed to go to the ER. So I went there. And they did a CAT scan and they did x-rays to make sure that there wasn't brain damage and to make sure that I didn't fracture my skull or anything like that. So super thankful that I didn't. Like, no brain damage, no skull fracture, no cheekbone weirdness. Um, weirdness is the word they used, totally. Um, so that could have been a lot worse, right? This is day two. Let's show the next one. So my eyes completely swollen. And it was so rough. Oh, my goodness. So... That was like the most, like visualize with me just for a second so that we can kind of be in this together. Like what is the most physical pain you guys have been in? And I actually want to like hear briefly, like from a couple of you, there's like a quick, like, tell me the most pain you've ever been in and why. Somebody volunteer. Okay, go ahead, dude. You're there. What? Everybody listen. His appendix almost burst and he couldn't walk. That is no fun. How about you? You cut your lip when you were seven because you thought you had a lip hair, which is not cool to have lip hairs, right? Okay, a couple more. Who? Oh, you, go ahead. You got your appendix, did it burst? Almost, yeah, mine almost burst and I had to have my appendix taken out too, which honestly hurt less than this for me, um, but I'm not trying to make your story lame, I promise. Go ahead. A little louder. Fell 15 feet out of a tree. Okay, so 
Cool. I'm sure there's a, a really good story behind that too that you should totally share with everybody. Okay, so here's the deal. So, you guys with me? So I am, this all happened, this is the best part. So this happened like July 23rd, okay? So a couple months ago. And this happened the day before our two week vacation. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was great. So fortunately I already had like worship leaders and musicians already scheduled to cover for me while I was supposed to be on vacation. But instead, I had to cancel everything. We had a couple of projects we were gonna do around the house, I had to cancel those. And I was just flat on my back for two weeks, okay? And that was rough. And I had to get reconstructive surgery on my nose, which hurt like worse than the accident did because they had to knock me out and re-break my nose and like form it back together like Play-Doh and then put stuff up there and it was horrible. So moral of the story, there's really all I want you to remember about this chapel is try really hard to never break your nose, okay? It's the worst thing ever. So have any of you guys broken your nose before? Okay, not fun, right? Hurts a lot, okay? So here's the deal. So I am, you guys with me? Kinda sorta? Okay, so I'm flat on my back in more physical pain than I've ever been in my entire life. And I'm kind of like, wow, okay, this hurts so, like, this, this hurts, my soul hurts right now. Like, everything about me hurt. And uh, you can take that picture down now because it's gross. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, that's cool. And everybody else is like, please don't ever show me that again. Um, so I'm flat on my back. And I'm like, okay, God, I, my whole vacation just got canceled. Um, it was super traumatic for my kids to see me that way. We have two little kids. That was scary for them. Super scary for my wife to see me bleeding everywhere. I was her airbag, which was great, um, but she was, you know, stirred up from it. And I'm like, God, this hurts so bad. And I guess, would you just, would you just speak to me in this? Because I'm either going to feel super sorry for myself, and I'm like sad that I have this huge scar on my face, and it'll fade, and I'm putting stuff on it and it'll be fine. But in the moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this huge scar on my face and I'm in a ton of pain. And even too, like, so I'm a singer and I'm a musician as a worship pastor and I've been a musician since I was four years old. And when you break your nose or when you have issues with your sinuses, that can drastically change your singing voice and your speaking voice. So I was super concerned about that and I asked my doctor about it. And he's like, no, it's fine. Your voice will be fine. We're just going to put your nose back together. But I had all these questions kind of leading up to some of those follow-up appointments. And so I just said, God, would you speak to me in this? Like, would you, would you leverage this pain for my good, for my growth, for my perspective, for my faith? And he totally did. And it was amazing to feel pain and discomfort and then go right to God and say, okay, how... How can, how can you turn this into something useful for me? Um, I'm never going to ride a Vespa again that much. I hate those things. But um, he, one of the things that he spoke into my life that I want to share with you guys today is just this beautiful reminder of what's really important. And at every stage of life, like every single stage of life, you're going to be confronted with things that feel really important and really big and really stressful but in light of eternity, in light of who God is, they're actually not worth you stressing out about or feeling a sense of shame or failure about. And, and for God to just remind me, like, this is who you are, Brandon. And, the, and for those of you who are at the last chapel that I was at, kind of sharing my story and how he rebuilt my identity, he just reminded me, this is who you are, and I love you, and this is what you're passionate about, and this is what you're thankful for. And it was... An amazing experience, but what it required of me, kind of my part in, in God doing that, was not trying to ignore that I was super bummed. I wasn't trying to, this, is a, this one is for free, I wasn't really planning on saying this, but I wasn't trying to be the Holy Spirit, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I wasn't sitting there saying, oh, Brandon, you shouldn't feel bad. People have it worse than you. I wasn't, because that really doesn't work. It just makes you, comparing yourself to other people either makes you feel jealous that people have it better or guilty that people have it worse. It doesn't actually help you do anything with where you're at. So um, instead, of, instead of doing that, which is kind of all of our tendency, right? If we go through something hard, we're like, why did this happen to me? Or what could I have done different? And usually there's not a ton of answers to those questions. So I just said, okay, God, I'm going to let myself feel bummed out about this. I'm not going to try to suppress that emotion. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of visually, I'm a very visual person, so I kind of imagine it like it's 
a, it's a, an actual thing in my hands. I'm going to take that emotion. I'm going to take that experience. I'm going to say, God, what do you, what do you want to do with it? Because um, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm laying on my back for two weeks, icing my face, and on, on, on pain meds. And um, so, again, inviting him into my pain and discomfort. And again, it was, it was the highest amount of pain and discomfort that I had ever experienced. But inviting him into that was really beautiful. And though it wasn't a vacation, I came back um, in, into the office and, and back to my job um, feeling very refreshed um, emotionally, not physically. Uh, I feel better now physically, but that, that took a while. Um, but I felt just reminded and, and the, the, the gospel solidified once again in my heart through that. So I just want to read a few, a couple of verses for you guys. Many of you have read the Bible like your whole life. And the Bible's weird, right? Can we agree with that? That the Bible says weird things, and sometimes it's hard to understand. And sometimes the Bible says amazing things, and it's easy to understand. It's a big, complex, beautiful book that is our favorite book as Christians, but sometimes it's hard to understand. And if you hear a verse over and over and over again, and you kind of assume you know what it means, you, you know, after the 20th time you read it, it stops affecting you. And, and so my prayer for you guys and my prayer for me as we read this scripture is that the Holy Spirit would actually open up your heart again. Um, and I'm not going to say, listen to this like it's the first time you heard it, because it isn't. Um, but I, I want you to just think with me. I mean, we're, think about pain and suffering for a moment. Think about your pain and suffering. Think about pain and suffering in the world. What to do with that. Not even like what like what to do in an activist way, but just how to feel about that. I think we can all agree that it, it's hard to know what to feel, right, with everything going on. So let me, let me read a couple verses for you guys. The first one is from Romans 8, and it'll be on the screen behind me. Romans 8, 17 through 18, it says, And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. Um, being united with Christ in his life, but also in his death, we, we see that all over scripture. Being united with Christ in his suffering is a, a beautiful, mysterious thing. But one practical part of it that I want to share with you guys is that not only can Jesus relate to us because he went through an incredible amount of physical suffering and emotional and spiritual and but specifically physical um, but we can even better understand wow like his suffering when we go through suffering we can be united with him in that suffering and and actually believe with him that like the cross Jesus' suffering produced something beautiful that our suffering can as well um, let me read another verse for you guys out of second corinthians chapter 4 16 through 18, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, and by the way, those light and momentary troubles, like Paul's being somewhat humorous there because he's talking about like execution and persecution and torture and like really horrible stuff. So, but has light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. So Paul believes that our suffering, these, these trials, whatever, and I, what I love about this verse in particular is it, again, it frees all of us up to not compare our pain and suffering to other people's, like your pain and suffering and your pain and suffering and your pain and suffering, no matter how big or small it is, all of our pain and suffering it says these light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. When we invite Jesus, not just into the, hey, I'm super thankful for this in my life, and this is going good, yay God, like that's awesome, and I'm, I'm not trying to minimize that, but it's often in the suffering that we go, where, where are you? So let me, let me just say some things that we know aren't true, but that you think, okay, and that I think. God, this, this stupid thing happened to me, but I'm like, I'm like following you, and I'm like doing it right, so why, why did this thing happen? Like, are you, are you not there? Is this whole Christianity thing stupid? Is it just a social club? Like, are you, maybe you're not good. Is that's what it is. You're there, but you're a jerk. Maybe you're a jerk. And may, or maybe 
I'm really horrible, and maybe I'm not a Christian, and maybe I thought I was a Christian my whole life, but right? Doesn't that happen when you go through stupid, horrible, painful things? That rhetoric just kind of starts, right? And what Paul is saying, and what I'm, what I'm hoping we can understand together this morning is that when suffering happens, we can take a route that goes directly to God. We can, we can feel these things and think these things, but run directly to God and say, all right, how do, you, how do you want to meet with me in this? And what do you want to say to me in this? And every circumstance, every season of life, that'll look a little bit different. God rarely works and speaks in your life the same way because when he does that, he doesn't want you to think it was you. He wants to remind you the way he provides for you, the way he speaks to you. He wants you to know, oh, that was totally God. That wasn't just me imagining him saying something. So you can't really expect God to work in a certain way this day to that day because he's God and he does what he wants. And that's a really good thing for us because he is good and he is powerful and he is present with us in our pain. So check this story out. This story blows my mind, okay? Um, this is a quote from a woman named Elizabeth Elliot. Some of you know who she is. But I'm going to read the quote, and then I'll give you guys some of her story. So this is her quote regarding suffering. I am not a theologian or a scholar, but I am very aware of the fact that pain is necessary to all of us. In my own life, I think I can honestly say that out of the deepest pain has come the strongest conviction of the presence of God and the love of God. Let me read that last part again. I really want you guys to hear this. I can honestly say that out of the deepest pain has come the strongest conviction of the presence of God and the love of God. So here's Elizabeth's story, because that's a really profound thing that she just said, but for her to be able to say that after what she experienced blows my mind. Elizabeth Elliot was born in 1926. Her husband Jim Elliot was killed in 1956 while he was attempting to make contact with a remote tribe in eastern Ecuador. He went to preach the gospel to this tribe, and this tribe, again, being a remote tribe, hadn't really seen a lot of other people ever, so when he came, they freaked out and they killed him, okay? He was there to preach the gospel to them, and they killed him. So after that, Elizabeth felt that God wanted her to spend two years of her life as a missionary to the tribe that killed her husband, okay? Dude. And... She went and she preached the gospel to the tribe members, and many of them came to Jesus. Like, what do people do when other humans kill their family? They, they go and they kill them. Welcome to world history, okay? That's how people, right? That's how people do life in this, on this planet. We're vengeful. We, someone hurts us. We want to hurt them back. We want to regain power. But the gospel of Jesus completely turns that upside down and says, oh, someone hurt you. Here's how you can love them and lead them to Jesus so that the pain you experienced isn't wasted. Like, I can't even fathom how that would feel for her to go through that, right? Like, that blows my mind and is one of those stories that just makes me go, yeah, God's real. The gospel is real. This, is, this isn't just... This isn't just something that we hope is true. This is something that we experience is true. And so what I want to do with you guys with the rest of our time this morning is give you an opportunity to invite God into your pain, your discomfort, whatever that might be. And even if it feels really small, like compared to some of the other stuff that people go through, I want, I, I want you to hang on to that. And even if, you, if you're kind of visual like me, um, if it helps for you to kind of close your eyes and visualize whatever that thing is in your hand, that helps me a lot, but I'm not going to ask you all to do it. Um, but I want you to, wherever you are in the room, to, to whether it's a physical posture or even just sitting there and, and really mentally focusing on this for a second. I think you guys all know that it's hard to, like, focus on one thing. Like, we have our phones and we have, all, like, we have a lot going on, and so often, like, our minds are kind of thinking about a lot of stuff. We're thinking about maybe the next thing that we get to go to today. But just for like 15 minutes here, I, I really want you to attempt to think about that pain and that suffering or that discomfort in your life. And I just, I'm literally just going to shut up for a minute and let you do that. So ready, set, go. Think about that.
Now you have that visualized in your head, what that pain or discomfort or suffering that you're going through. And what I want us to do over these next few minutes, we're going to sing together. I'm going to sing a few songs with you guys. And if you want to sing, you totally can. But if you don't want to, that's fine. I want you guys to have the space to invite God into your pain. And it could be as simple as that. Like, God, I don't know how you're going to speak to me through this. I don't know how, I, don't, I can't see how you're going to bring me through this. But I, I, I invite you to be here with me. And I want you guys to remember this. Would you be here? Would you help me sense that you're right next to me? And would you speak into my, into my pain? Because when we do that, we don't have to be afraid of our pain anymore. Most of us will try to maximize comfort and joy and pleasure in our lives and minimize pain and suffering. And we're kind of walking around trying to avoid hard stuff, right? But one of the beautiful parts of the gospel is that pain is not only something that we should try to avoid, it's something that we should try to leverage and invite God into. And amazing, powerful things happen through pain. The biggest example being Jesus Christ on the cross. But our own pain, God wants to speak to us. So again, you guys can stand, you can sit. This is, this is your time to worship and to invite God in to whatever you're going through. Okay, so I'm going to head over here and we're going to sing some songs together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. And I am a child of God. see so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Will you sing that with me? split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I 
could stand and sing, I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. Would you join me and sing that? I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. Well, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Well, I've seen many searching for far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word your good good father it's who you are it's who you it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To sing to you, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still in the love Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, your good, good Father. Come on, sing, guys. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
and your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old and your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips and you father the orphan your kindness makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own and you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free from all her guilt rid of all her shame and known by her true name and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise 